following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here, back at it again. And let's talk about the hottest color in men's watches, green. So when it comes to the color of our watches, at least on the dial, we don't have a rainbow of choices to choose from. It's pretty much the standard black, blue, and white. So when a watch company introduces us to a bold and brash colored dial, it's kind of a head scratcher for us because that's usually reserved for fashion watches where after a season or two and they're no longer trendy, we move on or we can even dispose of those watches but we can't dispose of the luxury watches because of the cost difference fashion watches are meant to to interchange them or change them out whenever something's no longer in fashion but that doesn't happen with our luxury watches which might explain why luxury watch brands are so conservative these watches are meant to last a lifetime for us to wear every day and leave behind it as an heirloom so what's up with all the green luxury watches so, whom can we credit for being the OG of green watches? Well, that distinction would go to Rolex and their Submariner. And to celebrate their 50th anniversary, Rolex introduced us to their boldest Submariner yet, which would be nicknamed the Kermit. And for those of us who aren't familiar uh, with the difference between the Kermit and the Hulk, I think most of us are familiar with the Hulk. The Kermit had the green bezel, but the black dial. Whereas a little later, the Hulk would be introduced to us having the green bezel and their first ceramic bezel, along with the all green dial. I think Rolex got it right with either the Kermit or the Hulk. So let's take a look at five other luxury brands and their version of the green watch. And let's hope they're not as ugly as this green watch from this fashion brand. Sorry, I lost my temper. So if you follow me regularly, you know I'm a real big fan of the Glassuta brand. So here is their 60s Panorama Date. It's in 42 millimeters and it retails for 9,300. This is not your typical one dimensional green color dial. It's what they call an imprint pattern. And I really like the look of this green version. In fact, Glassuta makes a series of other fun and colorful sunburst dials. So, if we can credit Rolex as being the OG for green watches, and if the future for luxury watches also introduces us to sunburst, fun, and colorful dials, we can credit Glassuta for being the OG of fun, colorful, sunburst dials. The next green luxury watch is Grand Seiko's SBGC017. This is a limited edition piece. It retails for $13,000, but it's also a big boy at 46.4 millimeters, which is Grand Seiko's largest watch. And it's a little odd because it, it comes at a time where watches have come down in size. This watch was also introduced a couple of years ago. I really like the combination of the black ceramic and this green. And if you look closely on the dial, you'll notice a pattern of small repeating trees. This whole watch, especially the dial, was inspired by the, in, the time-honored Lake Sua Festival. So what exactly is this Lake Sua Festival? Well, part of it includes log riding craziness and a lot of fun, um, but my, my words may not do it justice. So let's take a look at a clip from one of their festivals, which is coincidentally, if I didn't already say this, located really closely to the Grand Seiko factory. Here, you'll notice uh, the trees all, all throughout the festival. These are what we see on the uh, on the dial itself. This looks like a really crazy, zany, fun time. A little dangerous also. Came across really well uh, on the dial of this watch though. So if you like the green Grand Seiko, but $13,000 is just a bit outside of your budget, you can opt for Seiko's Kinetic GMT version for about $250. You didn't think the Omega brand would be left out, did you? Omega is actually considered one of the hipper luxury brands, especially with their movie tie-ins with that whole James Bond 007 and Spectre. And their green version comes in a Seamaster. Uh, it's a golf edition and it's 41 millimeters and it retails for about $5,400. Um, now earlier I said that the OG of green watches is Rolex and that still stands. But I was looking back at some of the vintage pieces of Omega and they've made quite a few green watches. But the reason uh, Rolex is still the OG is because none of the other watch brands copied the green versions of Omega. They only copied it after the 50th anniversary for Rolex. In fact, some of these green uh, vintage versions of Omega, I'm not really a big fan of them. They kind of look like a toy watch. 
The next green watch is Bremont's Alt C. This is in 43 millimeters with a retail for about $6,000. Um, you know, Bremont is a brand that I don't usually think of. I know it's it's been mired in controversy, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But for just in case those of us who aren't familiar with the controversy involving Bremont, real quickly, it, it involved a scandal uh, concerning their in-house movement um, where they were caught lying, um, claiming that their movements were in-house when in fact they were not. Um, Hearing uh, Nick and Giles' explanation for why they claimed what they did was actually cringeworthy. So um, we have to give them the benefit of doubt here and we have to move on. I know a lot of people make mistakes, but that was a really big, that was a pretty big lie that, um, that Brayman got involved in. Well, let's go back to this watch. Um, there was zero transition here, but I just kind of mumbled on. It was a little bit of a rant. Um, I'm not a really big fan of Bremond. I know they are known for hardening their steels, and their finishings are really nice, and they put a lot of nice detail, little touches around the crown. Uh, to me, the Bremonds are very simple looking, they're very plain looking, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, a lot of us are drawn to the minimalist look. However, I don't think it works very well with Bremon. Bremon's entire business model is to build quality watches uh, at affordable prices. But the affordable prices are typically between $5,000 to $7,500 on a Bremon. So to me, there are a lot of better alternatives out there. I just don't think green works here on this Bremon model. I kind of sort of like their other uh, colors, the black and the blue and the white. I just think that green here cheapens the look of this Bremon. And finally, let's talk about Breitling, the Breitling for Bentley. And this is a really big boy at 48 millimeters and it retails for $11,000. When I saw this watch in person and I've seen all of these watches in person, I really like this watch a lot. Uh, it was also about 12 or so years ago uh, during the height of the big watch era, but this was just way too big for me even then to be taken seriously. Uh, I really like the, the neural bezel uh, on this watch, but I've also since have grown past Breitling. Here in LA, um, there are some Bentley dealers that give away uh, this watch with every purchase. And I'm not so sure that I could see uh, a Bentley driver wearing a Breitling. Though, in this case, it might make sense because the watch was specifically made for a Bentley. I like what the luxury watch brands have done with their green versions. By toning it down, or in some cases, such as Glasuta, they put some kind of pattern on it. But they've also matted or muted uh, the colors of the green from being so fluorescent green or the lime greens of the fashion watches. So they're less trendy looking. And the green watches aren't really going away. In fact, at this year's Basel World, green watches were still introduced. And I remember Dolce & Gabbana, the, the fashion house, who also introduced a green watch for about $3,000, way too much. But their t-shirts are also, they go for like $600, $700. So $3,000, I guess, is in line with, with that brand. So would I wear all of these green watches? No. Some of them are just way too large. Even that Grand Seiko at 46 millimeters is just too large. I love the look of that watch and the combination of the black ceramic with that green dial. And if that was maybe in 42 millimeters, yes, I would wear that Grand Seiko. But as as they are, I would wear the Rolex Submariner and the Glass Uta. Um, either the Kermit or the Hulk. And I've known from the owners of these watches that one of the concern is it's hard to match uh, this watch with whatever they're wearing. But we don't have to necessarily wear a green shirt to wear these watches. We can wear gray or brown or white. Those colors go with green. Now, we can also w just get away with wearing one. If I, we were to have a one watch, and although that is an, uh, an unrealistic scenario, I know it's a very common topic, but if we were to have one watch, yes, we could get away with wearing a Submariner. However, I wouldn't recommend the green version because we might get tired of that green version if we wore it every day. So even in that case, I think we should have at least one other watch with the more standard black or blue or white dial. And in that case, I think whenever we put the Kermit on or the Hulk on, uh, we would appreciate it a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time. I'm filming this on a Saturday, and tomorrow here in the States is Mother's Day. Lots to do, and I'm rushing. Uh, not enough time in the day. And for those of you who are going to be seeing your moms tomorrow for Mother's Day, tell her your boy is wishing her a happy day. Remember to be nice to your moms. We only get one. And for those of us who aren't familiar between Kermit Frog, and I don't even think I own a green shirt. And to and to celebrate the 50th and to celebrate the 5th anniversary 50th 50th rich get it together man come on